When running any Apache Spark applications beyond simple exploration, you want to be able to monitor your jobs. With stream processing, you monitor a little different than with batch jobs or ad hoc analytics, and I want to show you how. Hey, Dustin Vanoy here, and in this video, I walk you through the default monitoring for stream processing with Apache Spark. I'm using Azure Databricks, but these techniques should be helpful in most Spark environments. I'll focus on what I use in my day-to-day -day work as a data engineer, but also check out my other videos to learn about non-streaming ways of monitoring Apache Spark jobs. So we will start by running a streaming job that reads from Kafka with the default Spark settings, and it's going to write to Delta Lake tables in Azure Data Lake Storage. The data is generated, but it is a representative of a real use case that I've worked on. So each event will say is a video view by a user. We'll assume that our long videos are broken down into short clips and that we use these clips for data tracking. So we get one event through Kafka per clip start. So pretend we're trying to build the next Netflix for the data engineering team. And this streaming pipeline we'll work on is just one piece of a platform. So we expect streaming ETL jobs to consume the output, but some of the analytics will query the Delta table directly. So I'm laying out this scenario so that we can get in the mindset of what happens in a real environment. We've got a streaming job built. It's critical for our real-time metrics and for our product analytics. Once it gets into production, we're going to have these questions come up very quickly. One, is it working? Two, are we missing any data? Three, how much lag or delay between someone watching a video clip on our site and it being available for analytics? So let's dive into where we go to answer these questions. There are two notebooks I use to kick off a simple but realistic streaming job so we can focus on what happens on the Spark monitoring side. This first notebook is just a Kafka producer. So it's some Scala code that produces quite a few messages to Kafka in a pretty short period of time so we can get the most out of this short demo. In this example, I'm using Confluent Cloud. At other times, I'll use Event Hubs for Kafka, which works with the standard Kafka API, but it's a pass option within Azure. Either option is good, just comes down to cost and what you're using with it inside your platform. So if you do look at this code and I've got it out on my GitHub, you can see that I have a get the event hub config, which I use in other scenarios. In this case, I'm actually using the Confluent Cloud config. We'll save all those details for other videos. Let's focus on what happens once I kick off this job. Like I said, I am reading from Kafka and then I am going to write to Delta Lake. So we have a write stream. Notice that I give the query a name to make it easier to find, and it's going to append data to a delta table on a trigger of 10 seconds, which will help us see each micro batch run and what happens in our monitoring as each micro batch runs. When running a batch application, you may have only one query, uh, especially if it's a simple program, but often Spark even breaks our batch jobs into multiple queries under the covers, and you'll see that reflected in this page. In addition, the queries can be broken into multiple jobs and those jobs into stages and stages into task. And that's how Spark optimizes your code to run concurrently and in a fault tolerant way. For streaming, you're probably going to see one or one or a couple queries per micro batch. So every time we pick up data, we run a new query uh, and that query creates however many jobs Spark has determined it needs. So each time the trigger runs, it pulls Kafka for data. When it gets data, it then creates a batch and shows this information here. We can go look at what's happening for a specific batch by clicking on the description. And that'll give us more details that are kind of beyond the scope of this video. In my monitoring basics video, I talk more about what it is on this page and uh, how to use it when doing batch applications, but it really applies pretty well for uh, Spark streaming as well. I tend to use this when I'm in the development of my application, not so much when it's running in production, unless I'm troubleshooting something specifically. Now here's the page that's specific to Spark Structured Streaming, and it gives us some overview information. We have each application that's running and has received data shows up in a list. Right now I only have one on this cluster, and it can tell it show me how long it's been running, the average uh, input and processing per second, and how many batches I process, what the latest batch ID is. But really what you wanna do is click on the run ID and see more details about this specific query. So now we have some pretty useful information on the page. I can go and look at for this, for this application, what was the input rate? And I can see it's about four records per second, which is honestly faster than most of my real production workloads are. Certainly there's bigger workloads out there, but a lot of times I'm dealing with data that comes in kind of all at once and you'll see the input rate spike at different times and be less consistent as this generation job. 
on the right side, you can see the histogram that kind of helps me see where is my median, where is uh, what is most common across batches. And that's a good way to just go, okay, I'm somewhere around four records per second normally, and I can look for outliers in that histogram too. The input rate and process rate are kind of used together. And so the input rate is how quickly those records are being received on the Kafka side. The process rate is really how quick is Spark processing them. And so the initial batch that ran processed some records that had already been there. And so you see a spike up to 30 records per second for that first batch. And then it kind of levels out uh, somewhere around 10 records per second, it looks like. And so you can see that there's a little bit of uh, inconsistency in the processing, but it looks like it's keeping up pretty well now. When you get down to input rows, I like to look at this just to get kind of a total total rows I'm getting uh, per batch. And this is, if you're dealing with real numbers, how many events are we getting? This is very helpful. Uh, if you're trying to make sure that you're keeping up on the processing side, the first two charts are a little more helpful. And then batch duration, really after that first batch runs, which typically takes a bit longer, I'm just trying to see, do I have some different spikes within my job? And operation duration, uh, you can see that we have the add batch is typically the longest running and the first batch seems to have uh, a little extra time spent getting the latest offset. Uh, and then there's a little bit more information here you may find useful. It's not something that I typically use uh, on a regular basis though. And if you go to the, the Spark docs, you can find the uh, information about the web UI and the streaming UI. And here's the official definition of those things I just showed you. Back on my notebook, I skipped over the view that's built right into your notebook. And this is gonna help us understand more about what's possible with monitoring Spark streaming. So I have the input versus process rate here in a very nice visual. And so when you're running from a notebook and you're running live, this is a very helpful way to look at what's going on. Really, you know, once I get to production, I'm not running it from a notebook typically. I'm running it from maybe a Databricks job or some other orchestration tool. And I'm not sitting here staring at a notebook. So the other view on the Spark UI is a little more useful. And ultimately what's really useful, this is uh, more of my real world uh, input, is the query progress that is under the covers that you can actually see in the notebook right here. You can have this being collected and you can do queries over this, you know, on top of something like Elasticsearch or in Azure, I pipe this to Log Analytics and I query it from Log Analytics. So in here you have really the details that make up the charts, which means you can store it for as long as you choose to and do a lot of different uh, calculations and different ways of viewing it that are different than the out of the box. So this is when you get a little more advanced, you'll want to uh, dig in here, make a little more sense of the different components that are available in this streaming query information. And if you're doing stateful streaming like aggregations or uh, joins that don't have you know watermarks and time constraints, then the state operator is going to be helpful to see how big that state is getting and how things are uh, progressing over time because that tends to consume quite a bit of memory if you're using the default state store. So let's review the questions I proposed at the start of this video. Number one was, is it working? So all the views I showed you should give you some idea the job is running and working. The structured streaming tab is where I'd often look to confirm things like input rows and input rate are above zero and are staying at a rate that looks you know, similar to what I would expect for the job. So that's kind of my go-to spot to make sure it's working. Question number two, are we missing any data? So the way I would normally confirm the number of rows being processed, at least to get an estimate, is with that structured streaming tab. You can look at the number of input rows or the input rate to try and make sure things look about right. To really get down to the details, you could either query the destination and compare that to your source data, or you could set up a custom script that parses out the query progress data to look for information showing the total number of input rows and aggregate that across all of the batches that have run. So check the description of this video for a link that shows more information about collecting that data yourself and how to do some things beyond the default Databricks setup. Question number three, how much lag or delay between someone watching a video clip and it being available for our analytics? Once again, the latest query progress message shows the latest offset and some other useful information about the lag. The input rate and process rate charts on the structured streaming tab give us a good idea how delayed we are from the input. And the batch duration gives us a clue of kind of the minimum time we should expect, which is around one second in my demo. Uh, remember that we have a 10 second trigger 
in this case. So we'd say, you know, if you're expecting events in a certain time, at least expect 11 seconds if everything's running smoothly before they arrive in the delta table. We could shrink down that trigger to try and get closer to one second or maybe a couple of seconds is pretty realistic numbers to target. If our processing is lagging behind the input though, it could be longer than just, you know, the amount of time we have for our trigger plus our batch duration. So using these tools together, along with some other Spark monitoring tools that I'll cover in other videos, are going to give you a lot more insight into the questions people are going to ask and the questions you'll have for yourself. So that's how we monitor stream processing jobs in Apache Spark, really with the default tools that come with Apache Spark. I hope you found that helpful. Reach out with any comments or questions. If you want to learn more about using Apache Spark or other data engineering techniques, subscribe to this channel and you'll get up to date every time I post a video. See you next time.